Hey everyone, welcome back to another World of Warcraft Dragonflight Alpha video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new talent trees for Holy Paladin. If you haven't seen my first video where I cover uh, Paladin in Dragonflight, which was the Protection Paladin video, I'd encourage you to check that out as I do go over the class tree in pretty extensive detail. We won't be doing that here. We'll mainly be taking a look at the Holy Paladin specialization tree uh, in detail. So as we go through this, we're gonna be looking at the talents, kind of seeing what's there, and we're gonna be doing this, kind of working on creating a build that will be good for leveling, questing, um, and just kind of general solo outdoor content. That means that since this is a healing build, we're probably going to skip over a lot of talents that are actually going to be good in dungeons and raids and things as far as making the build is concerned in order to focus on things that are probably mainly going to help us increase our damage. In a future video, we'll look at the talent trees from the perspective of actually healing um in a dungeon or raid like setting so keep that in mind as we go through the build we end up with might be a little bit weird but that's because you know we're trying to create something that we can go out and you know get our quest done with uh, that said as we are going through the tree usually the healer trees are pretty full of healing which is a good thing um, but not really a great thing when we're trying to make a build like this so if we do run into spots where we have to pick healing talents, then we are going to look at this from the perspective of maybe you're questing with a friend or significant other and kind of look at the stuff that's either going to benefit you playing solo or benefit groups of maybe one to two or three. So that being said, uh, before we get started, please throw a thumbs up like on the video. If you're enjoying this series, let me know in the comment section below what you think and whether or not you'd like to see more videos like this beyond the alpha. I really am using your feedback to help me determine whether or not to continue making videos for Dragonflight past the alpha. Okay, well, let's get into it. So we are spec holy. There we go. And it looks like we have the same talents given to us as Protection Paladin did in the class tree by default. We have Lay on Hands and Auras of the Resolute. So let's jump into our spell book and take a look at what we have before we even put any talent points in. So we have Consecration, we've got Crusader Strike, Divine Shield, Flash of Light, we've got our Stun and Taunt. We've got Judgment, our Res, we've got Shield of the Righteous, which we do have a shield for, and we have Word of Glory. Now, usually what Solo Holy Paladin ends up looking like is kind of a Gimped Protection Paladin. Um, so we'll see if that's still what we end up looking like <laughs> when we're done with the talent tree. Uh, we also have Absolution, which is our Mass Res. We have Beacon of Light. Uh, which is one of our fancy healing abilities that we won't really be using. Uh, we've got our two concentration auras and devotion auras here. We've got lay on hands. Then we have two passives. So the auras one here is just the one that gives us these auras. And then we have our mastery light bringer. Increases healing done based on proximity to your target. So uh, with this, we can go out cast consecration we can build up holy power with crusader strike and judgment spend it on shield of the righteous for damage or holy power for healing so we do have a pseudo build we could use here without even investing any talent points into the tree now as we go through this i'm going to assume you have a fairly good working knowledge of paladin and holy paladin in particular I'm not going to go into detail on every single spell or talent, mainly going to look at the ones that either are new or ones that I need a refresher on. Uh, Holy Paladin is not necessarily my most played healer. I have started getting into it a lot more in recent expansions. And as we go through here, even though I'm going to be creating a open world content leveling build, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the healing talents and whether or not um, they make it fun to play the way I like to play, which is the sort of like half melee, half healer sort of combo, which I really enjoy in particular in like dungeon size groups. So we'll see as we go. So we're going to go through and I think we're mainly just going to uh, kind of build this out the way we have been building out the other ones. 
All right, so like I said, we're not gonna spend too much time on this class tree. I don't think there's really any changes that I wanna make um, here because we are like pretty damage focused. Uh, we may pick up like uh, cleanse toxins instead of blessing of freedom here, just to, you know, kind of keep with the healing sort of theme here. All right, and then we got one point left and we will put it there. So this is gonna be our class tree. It's pretty much been the same for uh, all three specializations on Paladin, and I'm pretty okay with that. If we were gonna go into healing, we would end up on this side of the tree uh, for sure, and less into, probably less into the middle and a little less over on this side. But like I said, leveling build. All right, so let's get over to the holy side of the tree. We are gonna go through and we're gonna look at this starting with the active abilities, which are in these like boxes here. Then we're gonna look at our choice nodes, which are the ones with these arrows. Then as we go through, we'll look at the passive nodes, the circle ones here, as we kind of create our build. So we've got Holy Shock, which we have to pick up. Holy Shock, very solid ability, either deals damage to the target uh, or heals an ally and will generate one holy power for us. Uh, we then have Holy Light, so a mana efficient spell with a longer cast time. Or we have uh, Light of Dawn, which is a wave of energy that heals uh, allies in a 15 yard cone. And so usually I like to go this direction with the Light of Dawn. Um, you know, we probably end up picking up both of these. But just in terms of the way I typically like to heal on a Holy Paladin, I like to do this like close up uh, kind of stuff. So. Uh, continuing on, we do have Divine Protection. So a very short cooldown, one minute cooldown that reduces damage you take. That's uh, pretty solid for uh, leveling content. That goes into Aura Mastery, three minute cooldown that will empower our chosen Aura. Uh, we have Light of the Martyr. So sacrifice portion of our own health to heal an ally. Uh, you take damage equal to 50% of the healing done. So... Not particularly useful uh, for what we're doing. We've got rule of law, 30 second recharge with two charges. Increase the range of your heals. Again, not super relevant here. It looks like this is going to be pretty heal heavy. So we're going to be, like I said, focused on that two to three people in a group sort of mentality as we go through here. Blessing of summer. So they actually broke... Okay, so this is Blessing of Seasons. I like Blessing of Seasons, actually, as a mechanic. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I think it's just, it spices up the gameplay a little bit for you. Uh, so it's nice that they included that here. We do have Divine Toll, which we've had on all the specializations. Um, super popular ability, so I'm glad to see it returning. Uh, Barrier of Faith, which is not yet implemented. 25 second cooldown, so pretty short. Uh, imbues a friendly target with a barrier that heals them for the next 18 seconds that accumulates effective healing from your heals. Uh, every 5.4 seconds, the accumulated healing becomes an absorbed shield. Super cool ability, not super relevant for what we're doing here. Then we have Tears Deliverance. <clears throat> Release the light within yourself, healing an injured ally within 15 yards for a certain amount every second. Allies healed also receive 20% increased healing from your holy light and flash of light spells. Uh, so based on what I've seen there, I'm leaning towards getting Blessing of Summer and Divine Toll. Ble uh, Blessing of Summer does have a damage component or Blessing of the Seasons, right? Blessing of Summer specifically does have a um, damage component. And then Divine Toll will cast Holy Shock on up to five targets within 30 yards, which should include ourselves for a heal and also, you know, like four enemies uh, for damage. So that seems more likely what we want to do in terms of uh, trying to create something that's going to help us in questing and leveling. Well, let's check out our choice nodes starting at the top here. So we have Bestow Faith. So this heals a target for a nice amount after five seconds and generates one holy power. So that's got a 12 second cooldown, but that's a pretty rock solid instant cast heal that we could use um, as opposed to trying to cast flash of light or like holy light on ourselves or each holy power spent on light of dawn 
uh, which is going to be, what are we, where is the light of, okay, here, yeah. <laughs> uh, increases the healing of your next word of glory. Okay. I think personally in that regard, I, th I think I like bestow faith a little bit more in this context. Um, okay. The next choice we have is light's hammer. Okay, so this is one we're going to throw the hammer on the ground, deals damage to enemies, and heals allies over time. Or Holy Prism, which fires a beam of light. It scatters to strike a clump of targets. If it's aimed at an enemy, it deals damage and radiates healing. If it's aimed at a friendly target, it heals and then radiates damage. So I'm a little less interested in this one just because we don't we can't really aim it at a friendly target to get the AOE. And if we aim it at an enemy target, uh, we don't get the benefit of it radiating to so many allies. So I think if I had to pick this node, I'd probably just go for a uh, light's hammer here uh, just to get a one minute cooldown. You know, it's going to deal damage and heal. Down here we have beacon of faith. So you can mark a second target as your beacon. Uh, or we have Beacon of Virtue, so apply Beacon of Light to your target and three injured allies within 30 yards. Here we have Call Upon the Light to become an Avatar of Retribution. Uh, this says combines with other Avenging Wrath abilities. Now this one, it says not yet implemented. This should be the one that grants 20% uh, increased, increased damage along with Avenging Wrath, I believe, which is rock solid to pick up on Holy Paladin for questing because it gives us increased damage. The alternative here is Avenging Crusader, where we can become the ultimate Crusader of Light, uh, Crusader Strike and Judgment cooldown faster, and heal up to three injured allies for the damage they deal. Uh, Avenging Wrath. If Avenging Wrath is known, it also increases Crusaders or increases Judgment, Crusade, and Auto Attack damage by thirty percent. So really, we need to know what this one is that's not implemented before we would pick one. But it looks like coming down this direction or getting this talent is probably where we're gonna want to head. Like it looks like this chunk over here is gonna give us some ways to deal additional damage. All right, so we're gonna go through and try to uh, kind of build this out and um, look at the passives as we go along. So I definitely think we wanna come to this side, but we can get there by going through the middle or we can go through the side over here. Let's check this out first before we go. So when an ally with your beacon of light is damaged below 30% health, they absorb the next. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Not too worried, we may pick up a stow faith if we need to. Um, let's see your critical holy shocks reduce the cost of your next flash of light and cause your next holy light to generate one additional holy power. We are going to want to go down this direction to get into. No, we don't necessarily need to. Yeah, we don't we don't need to. OK. Uh, and then we do have divine protection, which is a nice little ability. Holy light and flash of light healings increased. Beacon of Light transfers an additional amount healed. So our Beacon of Light is going to wrap an ally in holy energy, causing your heals on other party or raid members to also heal that ally for at about uh, a percent of the amount healed. Healing this ally directly with Flash of Light or Holy Light grants one holy power. So since we do have a lot of interaction with Beacon of Light here, we're going to assume that you have Beacon of Light cast on your buddy in the party. Maybe they're the rogue out there doing DPS for you, or they're a tank out there pulling 18 different things, um, and you're he helping to heal them. So that's kind of the context we're going to look at this in. Um, so at this point, I'm not sold on anything. Uh here so we're going to need to know where we want to go next so crusader strike has two charges we want that okay so that's going to bring us into holy light illumination and focal light so now we have the holy light spell we have holy light and flash of light healing increased and we have beacon of light transfers an additional 20 percent of the amount healed 
So maybe you have beacon light on yourself. And you're healing your buddy to kind of give yourself some additional healing. Or instead, you've got it cast on your buddy and you're casting on them to generate holy power. Um, so either way. All right, so we do want to get Crusader Strike has two more charges. Your flash of light heals for an additional 10% when cast on a target affected by your beacon of light. Um, that's also potentially nice. Casting flash of light or holy light on your beacon of light grants one holy power. In addition to the one you're already going to get. Uh, I think I like that. That's going to be a very quick way to generate holy power in this situation. Word of glory and light of dawn healing increased. Yeah, so we're going to go infusion of light into divine protection for the nice little buff, uh, buff there. And then we'll grab light of dawn. So this is going to take us into two charges for crusader strike. So let's look at this area over here. So this is where we have Light's Hammer, which we can grab that. Lay on Hands grants the target increased armor. I'm not super worried about that, but it does go into Blessing of Summer, which we want to pick up. So we'll grab that. Coming down here, we've got the uh, additional heal on your Beacon of Light target. Or here, we've got Aura Mastery. And Aura Mastery also increases all healing received. Or Holy Shock has increased critical chance. We want that for sure. While empowered by Infusion of Light, all right, which is this one here, your critical Holy Shocks reduce the cost of your next Flash of Light by 30% or cause your next Holy Light to generate one Holy Power. Flash of Light heals for an additional and Holy Light refunds mana. All right. Increase the range of your heals. Light of Dawn is a 10% chance to create a second cone of light. Blessing of Freedom. Okay. Light of the Martyr's damage and healing is increased each time it is cast. I think we're going to go for the additional healing. Our holy power there. We're going to go for the additional flash of light heals on your beacon target we'll grab aura mastery mm. do we want aura mastery i think we're gonna get bestow faith and then when an ally with your beacon of light is damaged below 30 percent health they absorb the next damage that seems pretty good we got to spend two more points here. Uh, Word of Glory and Light of Dawn healing increased. I kind of would rather just opt into some passives here. And go from there. We'll see if we need to change that, okay? So here we have Light of the Martyrs damage and healing is increased each time it is cast. Light of Dawn increases your next Light of the Martyr. Now nah, we don't we don't want to go into that. So here we have a choice node between beacon and faith or beacon of virtue. Not worried about that. So we're cutting cut that off, cut that off. Here we have the range increase on our heals. Light of dawn has a chance to cast a second time. Holy light and flash of light have a chance to grant you power of the silver hand, increasing the healing of your next holy shock by 10% of all damage and effective healing you do within the next 10 seconds. Eh. And that goes into increase the range of light of dawn to 40 yards. What? <laughs> what? Uh, that's insane. That's super cool. And I told you I was keeping an eye out for uh, stuff they were going to do to to boost. Um, <laughs> to boost that sort of like melee. That's insane. 40 yards. That's that's cool. I mean, it's the opposite of the sort of me like melee healer, but it's still super cool. Uh, we're going to grab Blessing of Summer. Um, we want to grab Divine Toll, so I think we're going to go here. Holy Shock leaves a glimmer. When you Holy Shock, all targets with a glimmer are damaged or healed. Uh, into Divine Toll. Into Divine Resonance, so this will cast a Holy Shock every five seconds. we got one point left. Uh, we've got Barrier of Faith. We've got one of the Avenging Wrath buffs. 
Or we have Crusader Strike reduces the cooldown of Holy Shock by one second. So right now, I'd probably take this because we don't know what's going on with these two. They both look a little weird. Um, but let's check out, check out the passives here. So we have Tears Deliverance, right? That goes into a passive, which increases the range, healing, and healing bonus. For the Avenging Wrath stuff here, we have while Avenging Wrath is active, you gain a holy power every four seconds. Or Word of Glory and Light of Dawn have a 15% chance to grant you Avenging Wrath for 10 seconds. So I would probably put a point into one of these, but for now I'm going to put a point here. We're going to go with that. Actually, I think Holy Shock every five seconds or Crusader Strike... Either, either one. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to test it out. So let's get this stuff on our bar and sort it out real quick. So we got Blessing of Summer. We've got our Bestow Faith. Uh, we've got Holy Light. Light's Hammer. Divine Protection. We got our Beacon of Light. Uh, we've got Blinding Light. Cleanse Toxins. Got our Interrupt, our Hammer of Wrath, Divine Steed, Avenging Wrath, Light of Dawn, Divine Toll, and our Holy Shock. Uh, so this didn't turn quite into a uh, sad version of Protection Paladin. I think it's still going to be relatively similar. So we're going to basically... Switch these up here. Oh, we've got our blessing there. All right, so basically what we have, assuming we're playing with a buddy, at 45, one minute, two minutes, and one minute. So we're gonna cast Beacon of Light on our buddy or on ourselves, right? We cast it on ourselves, then anytime we heal ourselves, we should generate a holy power. So if we're out there solo, then we just do this, right? If we have a buddy, then uh, we, we probably cast it on our buddy. So uh, with the Beacon of Light stuff, we're going to get increased. Uh, let's see. The additional amount healed stuff, which I don't believe applies when it's just on us, but you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, we're going to get additional heals on Flash of Light. Uh, we're going to get the, if we're damaged below 30% health, then we get an Absorb Shield. Uh, we're also going to get Casting Flash of Light or Holy Light on your Beacon of Light grants one Holy Power. As we saw. Okay. So we get some benefits from having that. Uh, but. We're going to get. Our holy shock bonuses. So here our critical holy shocks reduce the cost of the next flash of light. Which is probably get what we're going to use. Or it'll make our next holy light generate one holy power. So we could potentially like holy shock for one holy power. Then we get the um, holy light. Like so if we holy shock and we get a crit, then we could potentially holy light heal ourselves for two more uh, holy power. But that's only if we're healing ourselves, right? Because most likely instead we're going to want a crusader strike. Um, but... Those two things may, you know, plus judgment, these may all be on cooldown. Uh, at which point we basically would try to, like, heal ourselves <laughs> for um, holy power to spend on our combos. Which is a little weird, but is what it is. Our holy light and flash of light healing is increased. We got two charges on Crusader Strike. Crusader Strike is going to reduce the cooldown of holy shock. Um... Basically, we just want to holy shock a lot. 
Uh, Holy Shock has increased critical strike chance. Holy Shock leaves a glimmer, so the next time we Holy Shock, everything with a glimmer gets hit a second time. We have Divine Toll, which is going to cast Holy Shock on up to five targets within 30 yards. Uh, and then we have the whole Blessings mechanic to use as well. So, uh, the way I see this going is that we're basically going to pull with Judgment or we can pull with Holy Shock either way. If we pull with one, we cast the other next. We have Consecration down when we're in range. We cast Crusader Strike uh, to generate enough Holy Power to use Shield of the Righteous if we want to deal damage. Or we can cast Word of Glory or Light of Dawn if we want healing. If the target gets down to 20%, we cast Hammer of Wrath. Uh, along the way, we do have some stuff to play with here. So we have our Blessings, we have our Divine Toll, Light's Hammer, and we have Avenging Wrath. If we hit a point where our Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, and Judgment are all on cooldown, then we can opt to cast a Flash of Light uh, or a Holy Light on ourselves in order to uh, generate some additional holy power. Alternatively, we can cast our Bestow Faith on ourselves as an instant cast to generate a holy power if we need it. So we're kind of filling the holy power gaps with Bestow Faith and probably Flash of Light, most likely. Uh, so let's take a look at what that is going to look like. So like I said, we can pull with Judgment or we can pull with Holy Shock. Either way. Uh, the Holy Shock actually looked like it cast on us. It did. Okay, I do not... I don't want you to... Self-cast. It's not on self-cast. So why is it casting... On me uh, that is annoying okay so for whatever reason we've got more paladin bugs <laughs> More Paladin Bugs. Um, I do not have like auto self cast or anything like that on. So the Holy Shock should be dealing damage to the target, but it's not. So I'll report that as a bug. So we'll pull, his, pull Judgment. We'll go ahead and Holy Shock. All right, we'll get our Consecration down. Cast these. We're building up to our Holy Power. You know, we're back up here. Holy power. These are off cooldown. It looks like we got a decently solid rotation to where we won't actually need to heal ourselves. Well, right there, we just had a, a down point. So here, flash of light, three points, holy shock. Flash of Light, we can cast that. That gets us another Holy Power. And that's pretty much it. Um, I don't love it. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say I don't. I don't love it. Um, I feel like so far I have done Restoration Shaman, Restoration Druid, Holy Priest, Discipline Priest. I think this is effective. Okay, like we have enough skills. We're gonna kill things, right? We've got Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, Judgment. Shield of the Righteous. That in itself is probably enough to get out there and quest and, and kill some things and, and get your stuff done. 
but it the flow is so like funky and weird and then this bug with holy shock where it's like refusing to cast on the target is also weird uh, i don't know if that's like if i don't have my beacon of light on like well it well it's cast uh it's it's still it's still trying to heal me uh so th that's just weird i so again, I'm I'm not judging this. I'm not saying that the Holy Paladin tree is bad for dungeons and raids. Okay, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not trying to imply that by any means. But I am saying compared to looking at the other healing specializations that I've created these types of builds for, these questing leveling builds, this one feels awkward. Not that I think it won't be able to go out there and quest, but it feels weird. And I really don't think there's anything that I could do in the tree to really change that. Because most of the stuff that I didn't take is stuff that's going to affect healing anyway. So overall impression, this is kind of gross. But maybe it doesn't really matter because it kills stuff fast enough that... The rotation doesn't get into a spot where it really feels awkward because you just kind of go, you know, you go judgment, holy shock, crusader strike, crusader strike, shield of the righteous, holy shock, and the thing dies, right? Right. If if that's what it takes to, to get rid of an enemy, then that's not really going to feel weird because then you're going to run to the next enemy and do it again and run to the next one and do it again. Um... Or, you know, maybe you don't Holy Shock, maybe you Hammer of Wrath instead. So, we'll have to test it. And we are going to take every specialization out into a questing zone, do a few quests, play with the build, see if we want to tweak it or do anything to it um, in the future. I'm going to be doing those videos actually as live streams, so you guys can jump on and participate. Um, let me know all the things I'm doing wrong, make suggestions for things that I miss, or just, you know, generally hang out and, uh, and comment and check out the builds. Uh, so we'll definitely do that in the future. Uh, that being said, like, I don't know what else I really could have done here to make this better at the type of build I'm trying to make here. Um, so I think this is what I have. I think this is what I'm going to be testing and I think that's all I have for the video. So don't forget to throw a thumbs up or a like on the video if you're enjoying this series. Let me know in the comments what you think and whether or not you want to see more content like this beyond the alpha for Dragonflight. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.